Okay, so the UK is going to have a huge increase in energy prices. So as the educational YouTube channel you have clicked on, this video is going to be the only video you will probably not need on many ways to save money on your technology items and electricity. Yeah. Undervolting is the art of basically making your PC use less power. There are a ton of benefits to doing this and it just requires a bit of time. There's no direct way of doing it since every PC is different, but here is the universal way of doing it. First, turn on your PC and spam the delete key. This will get you into the BIOS. It's important to know that different manufacturers will have a different layout, but the premise is the same. If you can, you should set a different profile because if anything messes up or you want to change it back to normal, then it's really easy to do so. Go to the advanced tab and find the CPU core frequency. Make sure that it's at default or set it lower to save more power, but will result in a decrease in performance. Below, there should be the CPU voltage. You can use the minus and addition keys on your keyboard to gradually decrease the voltage. For me, I know that I can use less than 1.25 volts, so I'll start there. Hit F10, save and restart, then go into the OS and load up Cinebench. You can download it in the Microsoft Store and run it for about 5 or 10 minutes. The reason we're doing this is to make sure that it's stable and it won't crash. If the test finished and worked out fine, you can go back into the BIOS and decrease it further until it's as low as you're comfortable and make sure you don't want to risk anything. This alone could save you a lot of watts and it won't hurt performance. In fact, it can increase performance because the CPU is generating less heat because there's less power. If you restart the PC and it doesn't turn on or crashes, it's likely that the voltage was too low. So you're going to have to go back in the BIOS and set it a bit higher. If your PC doesn't turn on or nothing comes up on your screen, then you're going to have to reset the BIOS. You should look up the specific motherboard that you have but usually there'll be two pins that you'll need to connect with the screwdriver or any piece of metal and that will reset the BIOS so you can just turn it on normally again. But it's not the only thing we can do. We can also do this for the RAM and thankfully it's a lot more forgiving than the CPU. Just like the CPU underneath the RAM frequency it should save the voltage. Thankfully on this BIOS there are some sort of guidelines at the bottom left so I'm going to decrease it by about 0.1 which doesn't sound like a lot but when you use your computer a lot, it definitely adds up. The final component that we're going to look at is the graphics card. The GPU is the most important and powerful, but also the most power hungry component. So it's crucial that we save as much here as possible. Thankfully, we don't have to use the BIOS anymore. Instead, we can use MSI Afterburner in Windows. If you have a higher end graphics card, MSI Afterburner actually has an icon that you can click on and it will automatically undervolt it for you, which is great. But not everyone's going to be able to do this. And the general consensus is that it's pretty similar to the CPU. You just want to keep lowering the voltages, test it, lower, test it until that's as far as you want to go or don't want to risk messing up anything. By the way, to test the GPU stability, you want to use Heaven Benchmark since it's the exact same as Cinebench, but for the GPU. This is all very risky, but it's also very rewarding if you do this right. So do add your own risk. Speaking of that, next week's video, we're actually going to be doing all of this on Zubez computer to see how low we can get the voltages, how much power we can save, all that stuff with a natural voltage reader. It's gonna be good. So make sure you subscribe for that. If you just went through that, well done. You got through the most complicated part and I didn't script this video just for talking about computers. So here are some general tips and little things everyone can do in their day to day lives that will save you a lot of those peas. Almost everyone in existence has heard the saying, turn off the lights when no one's in the room. But this also goes for all things that run off electricity. Things like chargers and socket extensions, even though there might be nothing connected to them, if the switch is on, there's still power going through it. This goes for even bigger products such as microwaves and TVs and even computers. If they're not going to be used for a long time, then just turn them off from the plug. This trick alone can save you a surprising amount of money. Tip number two. Many of you might have a socket extension at home like this, a one to four that has multiple chargers on there so you can connect a lot of devices and charge them at once. But if you're only charging one thing, don't do this. Instead, take it out and plug it into the wall because it's 
only one charger so then the power isn't being wasted on the other ones just sitting there doing nothing i mean this is just good general advice anyways actually a very important note that you should not underestimate how much electricity something like a laptop charger uses when it's just on on standby one source has found that a laptop charger on standby could cost you up to 70 pounds a year that's 70 pounds literally wasted because it's just not doing anything although you should take it with a grain of salt because this was a very old study and it's poorly done on live television but the next time you go to turn on your pc with all your chargers and lamps and everything connected to a socket extension maybe you should think twice about it also please do not use a socket extension f to like make a cable longer or something it will just cost you way more in the long run just get a longer cable man like come on I get it, many of you are very busy people and if you have to move away from your computer or laptop for a bit, shutting it down probably isn't the best idea, but leaving it on isn't a good idea either. So for a quick low effort solution, here's a fix. In your search bar, search up control panel and in that search bar, type in power. There should be a tag that says what power button should do, click there and change it to sleep. Save changes and the next time that you need to go away from your computer or laptop, Press the power button and it automatically puts it in sleep mode. So it's kind of like a standby mode. Although don't use this as a substitute for actually shutting it down. Oh yeah, another tip for all the laptop and PC people out there as well. If you search up power and go to edit power plan, it should come up with something like high performance, balanced and power saving. Now a lot of people are saying that if you put it in high performance, it will just basically like force more power so it like runs faster. But then it creates more heat and overall just wastes more power. So please keep it in balanced mode. Now the final tip that I'm going to share with you is one that you should be asking yourself and that is do you really need it? Now by that I mean do you need for example all your RGB on and all the lights on and everything or on your phone do you need the maximum brightness at 120 hertz? Yeah it might be nice but it uses a lot of power for something that you're only going to realize for the first half an hour. Like for example in my videos when I turn on my computer I have like all the RGB on I change the fans to white and everything just to make it look nice. But as soon as the cameras go off, so does the RGB and the fancy lights. Now don't get me wrong, I don't hate RGB. In fact, I think it's really cool. But unless I actually need the light or I'm showing it to a friend or something, it's kind of wasteful in a way. Now I am aware that the more RGB you have, the more FPS you will get. But even with that in consideration, what I'm trying to say is, if you don't need it, you don't have to use it. And especially now, it's more important than ever to save electricity where you can. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you should be doing this and that, like I know your situation exactly, but you probably do. So that's something that you're going to have to figure out. So yeah, that's all I've got. Hopefully there are at least a couple of things that gave you an idea or helped you out in this video. But that's it from me. If you haven't subscribed yet, we are so close to hitting 2000 subscribers and it would help out a lot. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me. All right, bye.